In this section of the course, we're going to go through everything related to manufacturing accounting. Now, as a quick disclaimer, there are a lot of different variations to how you can handle manufacturing accounting, and that depends on the company, the different uh, costing methods you use, whether you use standard costs or something like average or FIFO. So depending on the different way your company is set up, there are going to be different options of how you can utilize Odoo's accounting and some of the automation to make sure that your manufacturing accounting is as accurate as possible. So I will go through some examples in the next several videos of how we can utilize Odoo for our manufacturing accounting. However, keep in mind that your method may deviate slightly or greatly from the way that I demonstrate it. Now, before we begin with accounting, I'm going to go through some settings that we're going to utilize in manufacturing. So I'm going to click in the manufacturing application here. Inside of my configurations and settings, I'm going to turn on work orders and I will save this. Work orders are going to allow us to actually gather accurate time that each work order takes. And we're going to look at how that affects our accounting. Now under configurations, we'll have the ability to create work centers and that's where our work orders will live. So we'll have a work center. We'll just call this work center one for our example. And then what we want to pay attention to is the costing information under this uh, costing information section. We have our cost per hour for our work center. This is going to be our overhead cost for the work center on a per hour basis. Then we have the employee costs per hour for this work center. And this should be an average cost for your employees that work in this work center. This is strictly going to be used for estimation. So if I say this is going to cost $50 per hour per employee, then our to total overhead and labor cost is going to be $150 for work center one per hour. Now, when we actually manufacture a good, the system is going to take the actual employee cost that's listed under HR settings. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. However, it will take this cost for the, for the overhead cost or the work center cost, which is $100 per hour. Now, before we go any further, let's go into our employees application and let's take a look at these HR settings. So under HR settings here, we have our hourly cost. And we can set this as a different value from what we see inside of the work center. And when we actually build time or track time against our work orders that get created for a particular work center, this is the cost that will be utilized. Now, depending on how you want to operate your business, this can be the all in cost of your employee. So this might be the cost per hour plus some percentage increase for different things like taxes. Um, insurance, basically the all in cost that you might incur on a per hour basis for an employee. So this doesn't necessarily have to be their base hourly rate. And the reason why that's important is because when we're looking at our manufacturing order, the actual overhead cost for, or rather the actual labor cost should consist of the all in employee cost, what it takes to keep that employee in your building, working on a work order on a per hour basis. Now let's go back to manufacturing. We have our work center created. Let's go ahead and create some products and a bill of material so that in our next videos, we can hit the ground running. So I'm gonna create a new product. We'll call this manufactured product. We'll give this a product category of average cost. So this is going to be our average cost with automated inventory valuation. We don't need a set of costs. This will automatically get set once we produce one of our goods. And we won't worry about the, let's just set the sale price to $100. And under our inventory tab, we're going to set this as a manufactured product. And that's really all we need to do so far. Now I'm going to create a new product. We'll call this raw one for our raw material. We're going to have it in the same product category. We won't be selling this product. We'll just be using it. And we'll need to purchase this product from a vendor. So maybe we set our vendor price and we'll say this is $10. And here we're going to buy this product. And I'll create one more raw material, same setup, raw material two. I'll set a vendor and we'll say this product costs us $5. 
And under general information here, we can just leave it as is. So now we have a finished good with two raw materials. And the last thing to do for our product setup is create a bill of material for our finished product, or rather for our manufactured product here. So let's create a new bill of material. We're gonna add our raw one and our raw two. And for the sake of this demonstration, let's make it two products for each raw one and raw two. And this bomb type is going to be manufacture this product because we're going to actually go through the manufacturing process. Under operations here, I'm going to add a new operation, which is going to be in work center one. For the sake of simplicity, we'll say that this work order should take 60 minutes. And we'll just give this a random operation name. We'll say operation one. Now there's a lot to uh, manufacturing as a whole, but we won't go into anything that is not strictly related to manu or to accounting. Now we have our bill of material set up. The next thing we need to do is make sure that our accounting in our product categories is set up. So in inventory, we'll go to configurations, product categories, and we'll go into our average cost that we're utilizing. And really what we wanna pay attention to is this production account. So this production account out of the box has this cost of production set. And this cost of production account is going to hold the labor and overhead that took place in order to manufacture a finished good. So at the end of a manufacturing process, what's going to exist in cost of production is going to be our overhead and labor costs for the production of goods. We'll see what we need to do with that a little bit later on, but that's what we need to focus on now is to make sure that this account is set. Now in previous versions of Odoo, we did not have a production account set on the product category. Instead, it was, locate, it was in locations under our production location. We can have a stock valuation account, which can be the cost of production account, a WIP account, um, whatever you want to call it. It could have been set here, but having it set on the product category is there by default. So we don't necessarily have to set these accounts. All right. So we have everything set up, everything that we need to begin working through a use case and looking at the journal entries that get created. So in the next video, we'll do just that.